Today we're doing these Zoom house... <laughs> Sir, I need a refill. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. This is a just a horrible idea. I think it'll be really fun, but I can't believe that I'm gonna have three of my friends on the show at the same time with me. That's uh, so that's four people. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but these are three DJs that I started working with like kind of during the last, yeah, who knows kind of how long it's been, but um, with the, the stuff that has transpired, time has flown by. DJ Dr. Nate, DJ Little Red, and DJ Sailor Mike. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, hey, hey. Aloha. Thanks, Spike. Aloha. Uh, Where, where's Spike go? Can yeah. we get you like in the middle here? I feel okay. like that's probably the best. Okay. Can I start? All right, so if Nate yeah. goes that Pardon way, me. Spike yeah, comes this yeah, way. Okay. I, they, we figured I think it that's, out. I think that's groovy. <laughs> so they were doing these house parties, these uh, yeah. Zoom parties. Zoom yeah. Zoom. And lots of people showed up, and there were people dancing Hundreds, in their homes. Thousands of people. <laughs> Most popular Zoom parties ever. Ever yes. in the history of Zoom parties. Yes. But they also had like themed ones, and there was like swing ones, and rock and roll ones, and beach party wow. ones, and also. And dog ones. We had some we, dog We did ones. do a dog one, yeah. Let's not forget the dog true. party, the dog the themes. Pet, pet parties. But they also did some tiki episodes. So, yeah, they brought me on, we made cocktails, and I played some songs, and they played some rad tiki music, and. Yeah, super good time. This is kind of a pre-party for Viva Las Vegas Yay. because Viva Las ah. Vegas happens next week. Fingers crossed it's still happening. <laughs> if you're watching this now, then Viva Las Vegas is literally uh, next week. If you're watching this afterwards, then disregard it. Uh, Viva Las Vegas is a big like rockabilly weekender with pinups and burlesque and cars and hot rods and music drinks. and a tiki pool party, <clears throat> alcohol and oh yeah, and like a the... DJ yeah, who's hosting a lot of that stuff. That's this right guy there. over here. Yeah. Today we are going to do a cocktail from a Las Vegas tiki bar. In Las Vegas, what is your favorite tiki bar? There are two famous, well-known tiki bars in Las Vegas. One is the Golden Tiki, mm -hmm. of course, which is great. It's very fun. It's very Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It harkens back to sort of Trader Vic's and, and all of the fun of uh -huh. Tiki. And then, of course, there is Frankie's, which is like classic, old school. It's a bit of a dive, but mm -hmm. it's amazing. Smoky and yes. kind of punk rock. And yes. It's both are worth the visit if you are there. Absolutely. There's a different... Different feeling to each one, but I think both are worth it. I totally agree. <laughs> and so for the cocktail tonight, we're gonna do a cocktail from my buddy P. Moss's book, uh, Liquid Vacation. P. Moss is the dude that owns Frankie's, very oh, uh, dear friend of mine. He also has like a, a punk rock band that is shockingly offensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, for shocking. Wonderful. Offensive. Don't know if you would applaud that if you if you knew the song title. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'd fall louder. Much louder and cheerer. And they, <laughs> I look forward to hearing these. <laughs> he also owns the Double Down in both Vegas and New York. Oh, and Atomic Liquors in Las Vegas. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. And his punk rock band only plays overseas, even though he owns <laughs> venues. He's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're too big for it. Yeah, we're too big for my own places. <laughs> On page 73 of this book is a cocktail called the Hula Billy Honey. The Ooh. Hula Billy Honey. Hula Billy Honey. Now I know what you picked this. Your music is pretty much Hula Billy with the Hula Girls. <laughs> Hula Billy. Well, That's like, I like that. Sir, message. let me Hula read Billy. the uh, description to you. This is on their menu at Frankie's, about half the menus. This is not on all the menus. It's given four skulls, which means it's it's um, pretty good. It's Highly got, alcoholic. It's got some alcohol to it, which is cool because we've already had a zombie. That's good. So I'm ready this, to go. We're <laughs> rolling down the road here. This uh, the description of this cocktail is a favorite of the Hula Girls. Oh, oh wow. wow. Hey. You got a call. Look at you. You got a freaking uh, thing in there. You is it capitalized Hula Girls or just yeah. Hula Girls in general? It is capitalized. It's a proper <laughs> noun, Nathan. The problem, though, is that he didn't capitalize the. Ah. Oh, which, wow. Which, as the guy who coined the, the name of the band, the Hula Girls, it kills me <laughs> when you flyers and posters Should we call him right now? Is he, do we have his phone name? Uh, Masa, tell me to <laughs> change that. He's so rad and eccentric that he bought the, um, it's like a rocket ship from the Stardust. No. That was like a, a time capsule. And he has like a, a long garage, but it barely fits in his garage. Ah. He also has like a 60 Cadillac that's con quite convertible. Ah, 60. Anyway, anyway, it says a favorite of the Hula Girls, who coined the phrase, this coconut gyrating. Oh. Ooh, I love coconuts that uh, gyrate. Spike of flavors. Spike of flavors. Oh gosh. <laughs> is generated to get those grass skirts shaking. 
Yeah, wow. that sounds good to me. See, and that's the reason all why right. I want to do this cocktail with three guests so that I could uh, get all this cheering. <laughs> coconuts, all right. Are the Jay Reading Coconuts coming tonight? Or? The Jay Reading Coconuts. Uh, that should be a band or a dance should, group, I don't know. Jay Reading Coconuts, it should that's be a, a band. Well, on stage, the Jay Reading Coconuts. <laughs> yeah, my next band is going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should start it. I don't, do I'm it. not a musician. And so for this cocktail, <laughs> right. we will be using oranges, mango juice, coconut cream, falernum, cherry bitters, Honey syrup, 151, and Mount Gay clips. All right, we're gonna start by cutting an orange in half. Thank you. Oh, I <laughs> Jesus. I didn't know that was part of. You, the you show. know how to use a knife? I do. Don't cut your fingers off. Oh, oh see. Oh yeah, I know how to handle a knife. Okay, so we need one ounce of orange juice per cocktail. Okay. So literally in this recipe, they call for building the cocktail in the glasses, and we've never done that before on the show, so we will make the cocktails literally right up here, which actually kind of works out because there's so many damn people in the show this time. An ounce for each glass. Yes. Okay, so if you if you grab it from the top. Okay. Like squeeze. Oh, from the top. Yeah, yeah. Nope, still not working. Splashes out over here. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god, oh, I'm man. just terrible at this. If you wash your hands before this. We did. So if you squeeze from the top and kind of roll down, oh. it kind of directs the juice down into the uh, little mixy guy here. Okay. There's one ounce in there. You do this. You're much better oh, okay. Than I'll uh, I'll have you pour it into the glass. I will do that. I think I can manage. Okay. Pour that Take into this. And I can... this. Ah. Lovely. So. Another ounce. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a chunk of orange in there. <laughs> It'll be extra tasty. Okay, and then we'll squeeze this last one here. What kind of music do you usually DJ? I usually DJ music from the 1920s to the 1950s. Oh. On the, and then, of course, as uh, exceptional parties, uh, doing things with tiki and soul and stuff like that upon request. Yeah. Uh, but I would say uh, probably my favorite era is the 1940s. Hmm. I love the sort of influx of big band music that happened mm -hmm. there. Um, also, you have the popularization of blues, which had been around since, honestly, the 1890s, uh, but it was really starting to come into the mainstream sort of yeah. ethos at that point. So this cocktail is kind of atypical because it has a ton of juice in it. Three ounces of mango nectar per cocktail. It's a lot of juice. We're doing three ounces, right? Correct. One, there we go. Okay, okay. all the way up. Oh. There you go. Yeah. You're good there. That's, good. That's a little bit over, but it's all right. Might be a little over. That's my drink. Okay. I like mango, I love mango. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> that was only two ounces. We need another ounce. You know, you know, I can't do anything right. <laughs> I, I can't even pour mango juice. What? <laughs> this is just ruined everything. Somebody call my therapist. What kind of stuff do you usually DJ? Uh, good music. <laughs> I DJ good music. <laughs> yeah. Sweet music from the 30s and 40s and 50s, maybe, possibly. Mm -hmm. Swinging music. Duke and Louis uh, Prima and, uh, you know, whatever. And uh, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson. Mm -hmm. You know, if he had a swing album, I'd play it, dang it. So this coconut cream is kind of a tricky, gooey, weird stuff. But it's good. It is good. So one ounce of coconut cream per cocktail. One ounce. I think that's a lot, actually. One ounce of coconut per cocktail. When this coconut cream is cold, it's really tough to deal with. Yeah, so. it's hard to pour. Yes. It's kind of a good idea to leave it out. Well, you have to put it in the fridge, it'll go bad. Take it out the morning of. <laughs> Wait, did you just switch them already? Yeah, this one. Okay. I've had that, I've had that problem. Take them out the morning of, and then it gets warmed up, you know? That's always my policy. I like to take it out the morning of. <laughs> you never know where Red's going, man. <laughs> so Viva Las Vegas is coming yes. up, and you have informed me that you have a lot of work to do, but like fun work. Oh, it's fun work. It's amazingly yeah. fun work. So you're going to be DJing a lot. DJing. I'm everywhere. I'm at the Tiki Pool Party Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm at the car show on Saturday. I'm in the ballroom on Saturday night. And then I'm doing the All Night Jumping Showcase with Revan Martini. So come to Rad. that. Super fun. We uh, The Hooters played the Tiki Pool Party one year. And we played every single day, three shows a day, and started at like noon. They don't um, do that anymore. Uh, I know they don't. They uh, <laughs> give you more breaks. <laughs> and it was a lot of work. It wasn't very fun. It was like, I was very thankful to have the gig, but also I would like to come back and do it now. <laughs> the things are a little yeah. bit different. 
because uh, yeah, that was tough. Especially when you stay up to like four in the morning, like listening to music and drinking. And I stay up to four in the morning, whether I'm working there or not there, I'm just like partying. I don't want to go to bed because I'm having fun. Oh, I know, totally. Okay, so we need half an ounce of flarinum per cocktail. On the right. I already got on my fingers, amazingly. Yep. And you actually make cocktails at your home, right? I do. And I've seen you make cocktails and you pay close attention to like the I ingredients try. and... I try, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, as the night goes on, like sometimes things get a little more flagrant, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it doesn't work, she just adds more rum. <laughs> That's actually true. Just actually. add more rum. Yeah. And everything's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, a brand new bottle. Mm -hmm. So this is a brand new bottle of cherry bitters. I've never used cherry bitters before in my life. I really kind of hate cherry. Hmm. Wow, really? But I don't hate eating right. cherries. You don't like cherry flavored stuff is what you're saying. Yeah, but I also like cherry Coke, so. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you in the Rockabilly scene, you did a lot of girls named cherry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to do a dash? Yes, I watched your Ooh. show many times and I studied <laughs> yeah, the yeah, technique yeah. of putting a dash in a cocktail. Yeah. It goes up and down like so. Two dashes per cocktail. One. Ooh. Two. Wait, it's mm, a, like, like a, a I love Lucy mm. in here. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> boom. Yep. And boom. <laughs> Sailor, <laughs> Sailor, 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 Sailor. <laughs> And here we go, the last one. Get ready, folks. Okay. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Boom. The next ingredient is honey syrup. It's literally just honey and water. Okay. Yeah, that makes it a syrup. So half an ounce of honey syrup per cocktail. It's like right there. Whoever gets this one's gonna get lots of honey. Uh, what kind of stuff do you usually DJ? I love, I like to say it's the swing and rockabilly combo categories. Ooh. My favorite decades of music is 1947 to 1957. You get the jump blues evolving into rock and roll where there's still 50s swing like Louis Prima and such. Yeah. That is my favorite. Wait, you already switched this one, right? Yeah, that, that one needs it. Okay, wow. that is my favorite. <laughs> I also DJ, you know, 20s to 60s, but I that's my favorite uh, decade. That's correct, right? I believe so, or someone's gonna get a heck of a lot of honey in there. <laughs> Uh, I think it's so interesting because all of you guys are, are mostly like 20s through 40s, 50s. Yeah. And it's it's weird because my deal kind of good. Well, I, I like the early, early stuff too. I really do. Um, but I really love late 50s, early 60s. I have a very narrow scope of what I like. Well, I like that as well, especially if I'm DJing like at a cheeky bar, yes. then I love to yeah. throw in the early 60s with it because it just works. Totally. Especially when you get into like the some of the Motown stuff too, and yeah. you get like there's all kinds of good cool '60s Latin rhythms going on, and, and totally. there's like uh, just it all works really well together. So mm -hmm. like again, '47, '57 is my favorite. I do like the '20s and '30s, but the I like the jump blues, the late '40s. Yeah, it evolves. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't like that? <laughs> is yeah. it alcohol time? I do exactly. believe it is. So this cocktail literally calls for Lemon Heart 151, like this. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that Ed Hamilton was the guy who imported this when it came out, or when it returned, because it went away for a while. Ed Hamilton formulated his 151 to emulate the original formula of this 151. Can you still get lemon heart? You can, but if you are looking for the true flavors of the original lemon heart, talk to Mr. Ed Hamilton. How much 151 overproof rum do we need? This is the reason why this cocktail has four skulls. So, <laughs> Gasping off camera. So one half ounce per cocktail. Alrighty. So this cocktail only has one and a half ounces of rum. It's kind of, <laughs> where are you going? Oh, <laughs> one, uh, sorry, one half per cocktail. Oh. I, you yeah, should probably good. just drink that, yeah. Oh God. Shop, do it. Can you go by half, do you think? I think so, yes. <laughs> We're gonna give it a try. <clears throat> yeah. It's still moving. Oh, there you go. Uh Ooh. You're better than this than I than I expected. <laughs> that's what everybody says. Ooh. That's what all it does. <laughs> all right. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, what's your favorite tiki bar? In the world? Yeah. Oh. Um, and there's a lot of great, great tiki bars in the world. Uh, I love Smuggler's Cove mm -hmm. in San Francisco, although some would say it's not strictly a tiki bar, which is odd because I would categorize a tiki bar as anywhere 
that tiki drinks are sold in the spirit of sort of tiki is honored, which I do think yeah. Smuggler's Cove and certainly Martin Cade uh, does. Sven is very particular about that. Uh, the guy who wrote the book of tiki, he says right. if there are not tikis there, then it's not a tiki bar. I, I think Smuggler's Cove does have a tiki oh, yeah. or two hidden around. Oh, for sure. And Martin is um, a huge ab- tiki bar. Absolutely. I was going to say, yeah. I would say that, you know, given who Martin is, Mm-hmm. I would call Smuggler's Cove a tiki bar for sure. Oh. Um, absolutely, Latitude 29. 29 in New Orleans is probably one of my favorites. And you've been there? I've been there. I've uh, met uh, Beach Bum Berry mm-hmm. and had an extraordinary time. Yeah, I do love that bar. So uh, obviously you've never been to the Mai Kai. I haven't been to the Mai Kai. But I like the oh, other answers list. because anybody that has been to the Mai Kai, that's almost... That's the only one they say. And yeah. I know that it's on my list of like the tiki, mm-hmm. you know, the tiki pilgrimages that you have to go to. I've been to Dirty Dicks in Paris, which is great. It's an unfortunate. More divey. I know it's an unfortunate, but it's a, a great tiki bar. Yeah. Incredible um, bartenders. Yes. Yep. I had a really good missionary downfall there and a pearl diver, which mm. is really wonderful. Yeah. They're, they're fantastic. My parents hated it, oh. <laughs> but I loved it. Yeah, but I would say, since I haven't been to the Mai Kai, yeah. uh, I would say Latitude 29 probably is uh, one of my favorite tiki bars in the world. I hope to go there someday. And the last ingredient. <laughs> We're there, finally. <laughs> the Mount Gay. Best for last. Yes. Yeah, Mount Gay. What's so funny about that? Nothing's funny Another about that. Another brand new bottle. Yeah, brand new bottle. Listen to the crack. Here it comes, folks. <sighs> <sighs> so we need one ounce per cocktail. One ounce. Do you have a favorite tiki bar? Tiki bar. Or coming from uh, the swing era of Los Angeles, mm. do you have a favorite cocktail bar in Los Angeles? Well, um, I would say probably my favorite tiki bar mm. would have to be Spike's Breezeway. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but if you're uh, looking for my second favorite, it would have to be, I think, uh, Pacific Seas. Oh. Ooh. It's everything you want in a tiki bar. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's, it's super beautiful, and uh, you have DJ'd there a bunch, right? Yeah, I'm not biased at all. <laughs> but it is a really beautiful place, I'm telling you. I've been to a few tiki bars. I don't go to a lot of tiki bars. Huh. Um, I've been, well, I've been to Tiki No, I've been to Tiki Tea. I've been to most of the tiki bars in LA. Okay. Tonga Hut, I've been there. Yeah. And I've been, I like Tonga Hut. I like the oldness of it. Mm-hmm. This is like one of the oldest in LA, I believe. It is the oldest in LA, yeah. And I, I really think that uh, when, when Pacific Seas opened up and I went in there, I was just like, I mean, you can't get better than that. Well, a lot of that decor came from Bahuka. Yeah, oh yeah, Bahuka. I yeah. went to Bahuka too, I've been yeah. to Bahuka. It says build over ice. Oh, we're supposed to put the ice in first. We're gonna start over from the beginning, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think if you build this over ice, I think we would have a very watered down drink by now. Yeah. So I think we'll add ice to these now. We'll pour each one into a cocktail shaker. Shake it, pour it. So, ice away. I just want to, I just want to, excuse me, I know you're doing this thing. I just want to, I want to do something with it. What are you doing? Yeah, I know, I know what you're doing. I'm just saying, what are you doing? These definitely look like, like resort cocktails. So we are going to pour these now. What a gooey (laughs) mess. You know how to shake a cocktail? I, you should put show me in and I'll try and mimic. So I've I've been told yeah. from the heart. From the heart. And horizontal. Okay. So ah. and if you're like Steve the bartender, you smile. <laughs> All right. I got in a fight with an Australian bartender. Really? About how you shake? I said I didn't like him. But it was because he's too he's too good looking. <laughs> so pour that All into right. the heart. All right, so from the heart. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how you do it, folks. <laughs> from the heart. Anytime you shake, you gotta shake from the heart. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the part I always have trouble with. That, yeah, that, I can't do it. So the trick is you, you, you whack it right where the glass meets the tin. Ah. Okay. I mean, these are like perfect, right? <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, I don't know. Okay. I've never built a, a cocktail in the glass before. Neither that's a. I. Odd thing, but it's the way they tell you to do it, so. It's also odd that they say over ice, because as you said, I would think that that would just make it all sort of yeah. melt and water down over time. This is uncomfortable. Because <laughs> usually, like, you, you'd shake it up here. You shake it here? Yeah, like yeah. a da 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 Like Carmen Miranda? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, it's not just me. <laughs> no, it's, it's tricky. The nightmare I've heard is people breaking glass or doing that. Oh, God. Ooh. 
That would be truly terrifying. Wow. Let's see how it goes. I try the Carmen Miranda or from the heart? Whatever you like. Carmen Miranda. <laughs> they call me Cuban. <laughs> I'm making of the rum, baby. I go chick chick boom, chick chick boom, chick chick boom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hit it. So, oh, no. nope. Yeah. So hold that up. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then and then hit it with the palm of your hand. Here. Yeah. Ooh. Nope. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Nope. Well, nope. you could probably hit it again. Eh. <laughs> nope. I'm just failing at that part. I apologize, folks. <sighs> I loosened it for you. You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there wow. is the cocktail. Hey. hey. Okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> Thank you. So we are going to garnish this cocktail with orange wheels. So just thinly slice those things. Oh. Not like too thinly, like uh, maybe like half inch. Okay, so we start off with a basket. Oh, and for God's sakes, please don't cut your thumb off. Yeah, yeah. boy, watch this. Look at this. Mmm. Ah. Look at this, look at this, look at that, look at that. Oh, man. We're doing four of them, right? Five like of them. Like a little thicker. A little thicker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Sorry. That was. Oh, that wasn't a. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. okay. Whoa. This is good. Whoa. What, are you expecting company? I think we're good there. Can you give uh, each one a little slit? A little slit. Mm -hmm. A little slit. Let me put that in the thing. Bam. These look like big sloppy drinks. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here are the cocktails. Hmm. We need to garnish them with cherries now. Cherries, I love cherries. And then I even broke out picks with like the little- The fancy ones. <laughs> yeah. Tin what do you call it? Tin foil? No. Uh, no, it's like plastic. <laughs> Frilled picks. I've only had this cocktail maybe a couple of times before and it's usually after the band had performed at Viva Las Vegas. And we go to Frankie's and have this and Frankie's is tricky in Vegas because you've been drinking already and then you go to a tiki bar to drink more. When are you not Vegas. drinking at Vegas? Yeah. You kind of run on alcohol the whole that weekend. That is true. <laughs> Can't get my it's cherry out of here. Five hours. <laughs> they will not like stab. You know what I learned from uh, my friend Servana is you have to sneak up on them and like stab them real quick. <laughs> Just like your enemies. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's a sloppy <laughs> bitch right there. I know. It's <laughs> so what is your favorite tiki bar? It's kind of a split for me because I love Pacific Seas as well. And I like Mike, I'm partial to that because it's gorgeous. I've got the DJ in this awesome wooden like 1940s boat. Chris so Craft, yeah. You, 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 you DJ in the boat. So from a DJ perspective, it's especially fun. And it does have good drinks and good decor. I've but, done interviews from that boat. Oh, yes. My favorite, like going out to a tiki bar just for the heck of it. I love the Tonga Hut because it was my first tiki bar I ever went to as an adult in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. As girl as dating took me there and years ago, and it was just it was cozy, fun, cool, mm -hmm. and I had the amazing opportunity to help do some of the decor one of the days when they made an oh. outdoor seating section a couple oh. months ago. So yes. very cool. We're gonna garnish the cocktails with an orchid. So this will just sit on the edge here, right here. There you go. And yep. And there you go. And then Moss, Frankie's tiki room, I made these swizzle sticks of himself. Weird. <laughs> These go in that. like here. And then we have some brass bamboo straws. That'll go in. Okay. And so from Freaky's Tiki Room in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Hula Billy Honey. The Hula Billy Honey. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, cheers. cheers. Uh, Very cheers. Oh. Ooh, mango -y. Oh, mango goodness. Yeah. Mango, but also yeah, coconut. like coconut, coconut goo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely yeah. coconut goo. But coconut you, goo. But then you can kind of taste the orange juice too, mm -hmm. right? I do not taste the rum. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the danger. You're gonna have to sleep in the pool room. I these are virgin, right? Can I just drink like five of these? There's like, not much rum in this at all. No. Let's totally have not. another one. Uh, you gotta finish that one first, buddy. <laughs> but it's good though, right? Have two hands. Well, uh, speaking of rum, Spike, mm -hmm. we actually oh. didn't want to show oh. up empty handed. Oh, really? So we. Uh, you can't come to a party without exactly. bringing something. So, so we got you something special. So Ooh. our appreciation now, for me, you. I did the drapping on this. So Merry oh. Christmas. Uh, it's kind of like a tiki hat, actually. Uh, yeah. There you go, sir. That's what I was thinking. A tiki um, hat. Now, uh, what number show will this be? Maybe like 67-ish? Yeah. 67, so 67 yeah. shows you've done. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing years. number, man. Well, congratulations <laughs> on that. So much work. Yeah, it is, I bet it is, man. Especially with us. In honor of your 67th show, hmm. 
This is uh, something from your one. first show. Sixty-seven proof from your very first show. The the oh, so I don't know. From my first episode. From your first episode back in uh, April. Uh, oh wow! Something <laughs> April twenty-fourth, I think it was. What uh, month is it? September. No one knows anymore. September? It's September. Oh, it's September. The one. first of September. It's the first of September. It's um. You'll use this. Ah. It's a good workhorse, right? There you go. A little appropriate, dude. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you DJs. Yeah, yeah. man. Thanks Did a 50, 151 show. swizzle on your first yes. show. Oh. And that. Uh, and I've seen you use this. So you'll use this. I'm sure you will. Oh, I will certainly use this. I haven't had lemon heart in a long time. Yeah. So thank you so much, You're welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Let's just do some shots right now. <laughs> oh. I mean, are you a um, Don the Beachcomber or are you a Trader Vix? Oh which, man! Which, which you lean toward? I know you played a Don the Beachcomber, yeah. and and mm -hmm. I know. That's right. <laughs> but a lot of your drinks are Trader Vic's drinks. Yeah, we also played two New Year's Eves at Trader Vic's in um, LA Live mm. when they had that location. Oh, yeah, and then I'll uh, suddenly the last okay. No, it was a beautiful location, but it was just kind of wrong because people wanted to go in and like listen to hip hop and watch right. sports and stuff. And yeah, and it was like wrong. A, it's a place. Place. yeah, it's like a sleepy, elegant mm -hmm. dining and drinking experience. I would say that my favorite cocktails are from Don the Beachcomber. Okay. But my favorite glassware and kind of the lore and everything is Trader Vic. So down the beachcomber, why why is it the the cocktails you like? Usually his cocktails contain things like falernum mm. and kind of more spices. Also, okay. all spice dram, yeah, totally. Yeah. The Vic stuff is usually very fruit heavy, like citrus heavy, so like lemons and limes and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what is your favorite cocktail bar since you asked? Ooh. Are you allowed to say that on the show? <laughs> I don't have any allegiance. So. Ah. Um, but being in the band, you know, we do have a lot of friends be that own bars. Like we played at Forbidden Island in, in Alameda. And, but I, I would say around here, one of my favorite cocktail bars is the Blind Rabbit. Oh yeah. Wow. Not a tiki bar, but an incredible cocksmithing experience. I mean, my favorite tiki bar is the Mai yeah. It's It's redundant to say it now. But it would be different though, I think, as a musician. Um, sometimes if you're mm. playing a, a bar, your favorite tiki bar as a musician might be different than your favorite tiki bar as a patron. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? yeah. Don the Beachcomber was really good to us. Sam Seafood yeah. that became Don, Don the Beachcomber. And um, hopefully if things keep going the way that they're going, maybe that place will reopen. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It'd be amazing. We'll see what, yeah, oh, we'll see what I, That's where I actually met you with the Hula Girls at, was that Don the Beachcomber like eight years ago? <laughs> Can't believe that. Yeah. And I didn't know, wasn't know you at all, but come in there, you were playing, you started your set. <laughs> we're we're careful there, Mike. We're losing don't, don't. And I was impressed with your with the show because you did a cover of um, Me Rock a Hula. Oh yeah. And you know, and with Bill Haley, he has a lot of brass in there, and you didn't have any brass, and yet it still sounded like a kick-ass cover. And I was like, all right, if you can do a kick-ass cover of that without any brass, then I'm gonna give Impressive. some props to this band. So appreciate it. Yeah. God, we haven't played that song. Well, we haven't played any song in like a year and a half. But uh, there is a brand new Tiki Bar opening in Long That's Beach right. coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think I can say anything more than that. Uh, catch the Hula Girls on October 2nd there. Oh, good to know. I always present these Breezeway Cocktail Hour membership pins oh. to all the guests. So oh, who gets that one pin? You have to fight over it? <laughs> I have to fight over it. <laughs> this one's mine. There's, there's no packaging on oh. it. But I will be sure to get you guys a oh. pin each. And if you join the $10 oh. tier of the Patreon, you too can be like this lovely lady. Yeah. So. Mike, have you ever been to, to Frankie's? I've never, I've told, I don't go, I haven't, I don't go anywhere. I just, it's I don't go anywhere. I just stay at home. <laughs> I have but not been there. I've been to the uh, the Golden, golden Tiki. Yeah, oh, okay. there, but I have not been to Did you it. like the uh, the Golden Tiki? I did. I, it's been like five years. Hmm. I was at Viva Las Vegas and I had friends like, hey, come meet us at the Golden Tiki. And I'm like, like I hadn't drunk enough. Sure enough, yeah. I went over. When you go to a tiki bar in Vegas, I almost always just order beer. Yeah. Because if I order this when I get to Frankie's after drinking beers all day yeah. long, like, oof. The, the stools over there are from Frankie's. Really? Those two, right here? Oh, those yeah. two logs, yeah. quite the collection. The moss had a problem with them. They kept falling over in the barn. Oh, no. There were like 30 of them or something, and then and that's why I fell into them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of art there. I think one, the last big tiki that was carved by Leroy Schmaltz of Oceanic Arts is there. That tiki right there is carved by Leroy Schmaltz, wow. and he is the guy who who outfitted all of the, the tiki bars, like from the beginning yeah. Yeah, till through Disney and everything. You know, Frankie's has one of my favorite pieces of tiki art. Oh, what is that? It's in that like back sort of raised up area. That's okay. There. And there's a girl, and and she's topless, but mm. she's smoking. She's got like a cigarette coming out her mouth, and she's looking at you like, what? 
<laughs> and it's just great. Do you know who? Do you know who painted that? I don't, and it. I. I it's not big it, toe. Or... I don't think so. Yeah. I love that piece because mm -hmm. it is like some people would look at it and go, "Oh, a topless girl," and that. But then I was like, she like clearly is like. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> With like this cigarette hanging, and that is her expression as well. The face right. is like, uh. and it's just one of my favorites that I've ever seen because it's so like perfect uh -huh. for that, you know. Yeah. And, and um, it just whenever I go in there, I'm always like, oh, there I think, it is. I think my favorite piece of art there is Shag's vice tester. Yes. It's like one of those vice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like one of those things where you grip it. You put a quarter in or whatever, and you grip the thing, and then it lights up like. Okay. And, it's in the back. And it's there. and Shag. Yeah, like Shag the artist. Yep. He did it. Yeah, he, he did the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. What mm. are the things? It's like. Oh, it's like what a are the different vices? One. Yeah. It's like all the different. Is it like like, like smokes too much or something? Yeah, it's like all these. Presses too know, much. Normally it's those like it's or? normally it's all these like you know red hot lover or things like that. But then his are different. There's you need to go like, to more tiki bars. needs to take a nap, like, needs to take a nap, and like, there's like a bunch oh, of yeah, other yeah, ones. Yeah. It's really funny. Yeah, it's super good. It's, it's a good one. And it's right, it's in the back, so not everyone notices, uh, which is funny to me, because I'm always like, that's actually like, you I can't try imagine for a different how much that every is time worth. There, right? I do, but I can't even imagine how much that's worth. Oh, yeah. And know? then I think the main tiki was carved by our buddy Crazy Owl, oh. and it's when you walk right in the door, it's a gigantic yeah. tiki with like a smoke machine kind of like embedded nice. in it. And then it's got a gigantic. Dog. He told me one time. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Moss, what's up with these? Uh, what's up with these swizzles that, that you made the... with your head on them? Yeah. And he's he told me. I think we were at Tiki Caliente in Palm Springs, and he goes, he goes, I like walking into my bar and seeing all these girls sucking on my head. Mmm. What a charmer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a charmer. I mean. Oh. Yeah. I have some of these swizzles at home, and now I'm just. Do they really like, suck I on his head, though? Or I they can't really take it seriously. On... Like... Oh, he's sucking on his head. That's <laughs> Well, well, folks, although after a couple of these, all right. folks, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike's Woo! Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I want to thank DJ Dr. Nate, right? Yes. Okay, I was screwed that up. DJ Little Red. Sailor Mike. And DJ. Yeah, you can start over on that if you want. And to. DJ Sailor Mike. Follow everybody on Instagram, on Facebook. What, what do you want to share your stuff? I'm more on Facebook sure. with Sailor Mike. Moron. On Facebook. You moron. <laughs> Jesus. He is, he is more on Facebook. There you go. It's Sailor Mike. Oh, Sailor, Sailor Mike. Mike. I'm Instagram too. I'm Sailor Mike on Instagram. Hi, I'm Witten Frank, also known as DJ Little Red. You can find me on DJ Little Red on Facebook or at Miss Red About Town on uh, Instagram. Hmm. DJ Dr. Nate, you can find me at DJ Dr. Nate, DJ D R N A T on both Facebook and Instagram. And all over Viva Las Vegas. And all yes, over Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Is Viva, Viva Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. The king of Viva And maybe Las we'll Vegas. set up like a like a Las Vegas meetup at Frankie's or something uh, next yes. week. So Let's stay tuned and I'll, oh I'll see what God. I can do. Please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and uh, we'll see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. Ooh. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Syrup. <laughs> Stop wiggling that. Okay. Creeping, creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you give DJs it. drinks before they start working. Yeah. You have a thinking hat on? Is that the thinking hat or is that a different hat? You need to get a different hat? <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna name my first daughter Flannery. Oh. What made you guys come up with the idea of doing the house parties? So all three of us were some of the house DJs at Clifton's. Mm -hmm. We had a loyal following of people that came yes. to see whichever one of us was playing. They came regularly. Well, well I, I was just bored and I didn't, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to DJ. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to, I was on a show, a Zoom show, and they had me DJ. And I've never heard of Zoom before. I mean, people mentioned Zoom. I hadn't either. Yeah, right? People mentioned Zoom? Zoom before, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And I, I had to figure out how to, fit, you know, finagle it and get it going. Yeah. But then I really liked the the setup that it had, and the thing that really sold me was the the virtual background. <laughs> right? I thought, yeah. well, this is a cool idea. I don't have to clean my house now. Yeah. No, but I used to run a club uh, with a, a friend of mine named Tip, and we used to run a club called the Swing Pit back in the 2001, oh, yeah. back in the early days, and we used to show all. All these old time videos of swing videos oh. on on a big screen and stuff, and we used to have, you know, have this huge collection of videos, and I and I haven't been able to do that in a long time. I thought, what a great way to show these videos on the on the backdrop while we're doing the DJing, and I thought, well, let me let me get call these guys, 
and see if these guys will, would want to do it. And they okay. said yes, thank God. Yeah. And uh, and I thought that would be a lot of a lot of fun to DJ with these guys because it was great. And it was about, more fun than yeah. we realized, and we didn't know it was going to turn into this thing. Like it went on way longer, got more popular than we ever thought. It was ended up being more fun than we ever thought. Yeah. Yeah, I looked. I really looked forward to it. You guys invited me kind of out of the blue, and I was like, I, you know, I'm. Everybody had a ton of free time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Except yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I finally had time to start projects that I wanted to do, right. like at home, and so I started doing all this stuff. But but when I got that invitation, I was like, yeah, I, I'll show up and make a cocktail, or maybe the first time I, I played a song or, or something. Not than both. I don't yeah. know. And then after that, I was like, I want to see all of these, like. <laughs> And so, like sometimes I'd watch them with the, from the yeah, hot tub. With like, yeah, that was time. cool, man. Yeah. You show up uh, every once in a while. It was and be like, super. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yeah. we didn't really know, you know, because there were lots of Zoom shows happening. Everybody was yeah. doing a Zoom show, and then some people kept doing it, and some people didn't. And you know, we didn't really know what was going to work for people. But I think one of the compliments that I got the most often about our show was that it wasn't like a club show. Because I had lots of friends who were DJs who were doing like basically they were doing what they do at the club. Oh right. They just play music, and That's it. you know, it was Twitch or Zoom, and you just watch them play music. Yeah. No, you had like a variety yeah. show kind of thing. We did. Yeah. And we, we talked. Like a radio we had a chat show box. Kind yeah. of feel where we were like, oh, this DJ is going to do this, and we're going to talk about you know why we like this song. Totally. Share a little bit of history. Somebody said to me it was. Like going, being out actually, mm -hmm. where you're out at the club and music's going and there's cocktails and you're talking with your friends. Right. It's kind of like the idea was like a thought. virtual uh, night at Clifton's. The we drinking, first, of course, the drinking, the yeah. drinks. Yeah, we, we can't forget that. We made, we made cocktails on our show and then we, <laughs> we, we would drink cocktails. so many and talk about it. Let's little <laughs> thing flying around. First time you were on and you were playing or mixing from this background, and I hadn't been over here yet, I was like, I asked you, I'm like, is that a fake background? Because there's been so many people have these fancy bar fake backgrounds yeah. on Zoom. I immediately I was like, wait a minute, knowing this guy it probably isn't fake. Right? It's not fake. It's amazing. I was on a Zoom conversation with Eve Bergeron, who was Trader Vic Bergeron's granddaughter, like listening to her intently. And then all of a sudden I'm looking through the Zoom people that are watching or whatever. And there's some guy that's using my bar as, ah. as a background. I, and I like, oh. Look out, I looked out the window. I was like, is there somebody in my backyard? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. But no, yeah, so hopefully, uh, we, I guess we're announcing it on here. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be back for our house parties uh, around Sometime. Halloween. Halloween. So. You guys kind of called like the end of it. Yeah. And I was like, well, don't do that. <laughs> it's, it's too fun. And like maybe it doesn't have to be so regular, but. No. You know, every once in a while, it's a fun thing. Why not? I look forward to it. I, yeah. I really got a kick out of uh, promoting it. And, 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 and we did. We had a lot of people that it, came all the time. <laughs> I can't. You are doing it once, like every two weeks, and then we stopped. We did it like once a month. Mm -hmm. And these people kept coming and coming, and, and I just... <laughs> you know, I'd never met these people before, you yeah. know? I mean, none of them are my friends. But uh, <laughs> there are people I've never met before, and then suddenly I felt like I... I knew them. It was like you, like like with you. Oh yeah. It's like I've I've never I've yeah. seen you at Pacific Seas playing, yeah. but never talked to you because I you know I don't know. Where I am. Oh yeah, because I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big, big star. <laughs> <laughs> then here I am coming coming in the door, and yeah. I'm seeing you in person. It's the first time I've seen him in, in like a year over a year. Yeah. And and it's like you know yeah, buddies. Like, but yeah. I know I know who you are because yes, we, we sort of spent time on yeah. Zoom. Yeah. And these guys too. It's like you know mm -hmm. I spend more time being your friend on Zoom than, than, than I did in, in real life. Oh right. Yeah. And this is like another. This is like only <laughs> the second time we've been together in person. Yeah. Since we did the Clifton show a yeah. year thousands of years ago. Okay, give me a sec. <clears throat> Breathe. Serious faces. <sighs> Think of sad things. <clears throat> okay, ready? <laughs> now you got me laughing. So weird how that whole virtual thing kind of became part of our lives and became a, a replacement for actual being together with people. We were sort of accepting that as as what this is norm. Yeah, this is life now. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah, it was fun, yeah, I mean, and then it actually did feel, as you said, like you knew the person, yeah. your friends. It actually did feel like hanging out. Oh, with for friends, sure. And that was something that we, I think, really sought to curate on our show, mm -hmm. and that was a big part of it for mm -hmm. us. Was like we wanted people to feel like they were hanging out totally. and that they could talk to us. So we always kept the chat going. You know, we had drinking words and things. The oh, idea yeah, was kind of like a party. Made yeah. fools of each other. It was a party. Stop laughing. <laughs> I told you there wasn't much in that one. All right, here you go. <laughs> barely even know you. You're turning very testy on me, DJ Little Red. I feel that we're friends. Oh, okay. 
Well, the Hula Girls played over 200 shows in the Dagger Bar what? at the Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm rich and famous now. <laughs> oh yeah, mango juice. Mango Who juice? got you this rum? And why haven't you used Lord it? They can, yeah. I don't know. Well, Try not to, right? to blow that dust into the cocktail. <laughs> it's from Nicaragua. Yes. Anytime I'd surf in Nicaragua, the first thing you see when you get off the plane is nothing but Florida Kanye signs. Oh. This is an interesting thing because I don't usually expect to see this much barking in a video. <laughs> All right, doctor. Yes. Doctor. <laughs> doctor, doctor. You're spies, yes. like us. Yes. Red again. Red, red again. again. Sounds like a song. <laughs> My eyes are red uh, again. I think it was this. <laughs> Can you still get lemon and heart? Lemon and heart? Lemon heart. Bye. See you later. Bye -bye. <laughs> I've been to Bahuga. I, I was so young, I think, back then, and I, I went there and I didn't really appreciate it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that kind of happens a lot. Like people, Astro, Astro, I'm talking here. <laughs> Your Sailor Mike is on the floor. <laughs> well, we'll be soon, actually. <laughs> Resort cocktails, overpriced and oversweet. Yes. You, uh, you, um... Mm -hmm. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I think hard about this one. One more second, one more thing. There we go. Boom. Bam. Mm-hmm. Bam. 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 Bam.